Hey everybody, here's your weather update for you. We're going to be talking about um, the dry weather and the heat that's moving in, although we do see a, a breakdown of that when we could get more rain back in the area, which we'll show you when that will be happening. Uh, we're going to show you a longer term, uh, 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day outlooks. Uh, also, um, off the top here, I wanted to just have a little fun. I, I've occasionally put a little uh, weather quiz up on my social media pages, and I've done that the last couple, three days, and I thought I'd go over one and kind of you know, tell you if you want to go check out, we have another one up there. So we'll do that. Here's the first thing we're going to talk about, though, is at, at one point, May had been five and a half degrees colder than normal. Now we're 19 days in, and of course, with the recent warm weather or warmer weather, we're starting to chop away at that. So now we're 3.4 degrees below normal, and we're really going to see that go away as a much warmer weather is now starting to move into the area. Okay, a break from that. Talk about this weather quiz thing. If you uh, go to either of my social media sites, they're real easy to find, uh, Facebook or Twitter, I randomly will put some weather quizzes on there. While you're there, hey, give me a follow. Uh, that way you'll know what's going on. I, I post a lot of things on, on social media. But uh, anyway, I had a weather quiz on there, which just ended earlier today, but I wanted to go over this one. And this said, on average, what is the biggest weather killer in the United States over the past 30 years? And this is the entire country as a whole. And I put it on both of my social media pages. And here was the outcome. As you can see on the Twitter, the poll in percentages, uh, most thought it was flooding, although heat was pretty high. Uh, on the other side, Facebook, and you can't see lightning, it's underneath the, the, my image there, but it's two, so lightning had two. So you can see heat and flooding were also pretty high on the, uh, the Facebook post. And as it turns out, it actually is heat, believe it or not. Uh, I think that surprises some people. It, it doesn't get probably quite the news coverage that um, other things do. And it's also not necessarily that big of a problem in the rural areas like around here, more in the big cities. Uh, when you look at, this is a, a NOAA map, and this is uh, weather fatalities. It's 2019, we didn't have the, the 2020 numbers in here yet on this, but the bottom line is look at the yellow. The yellow bars would be the 30-year um, average fatalities. This is from 1990 to 2019. And heat easily is, is above everything else. Uh, flooding is pretty high, but nowhere near heat. And then you have tornadoes, and then you have lightning and hurricanes, which are pretty close in there. Uh, but no doubt, heat is the biggest one on average over the last 30 years across the country. So something kind of interesting. I have another quiz on there, so if you go up there, I'll give you a hint. It has to do <coughs> with the last time we had a massive tornado across our country. And it might surprise you the answer to that. I've got the quiz on both of those pages, and I'll have an answer for you uh, during the afternoon hours on um, Thursday. And we'll talk more about that. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention here real quick, we're starting to get some pictures of this. Yes, that's the cicada, thanks to Chuck over in Clay County for sending us this, but we've seen a few other pictures coming in. I think with the warm weather and the drier weather now, we're going to really start to see a lot of these. Of course, you've heard a lot on the news about this, the 17-year cycle of, of this brood of it, and uh, we're, we're talking about um, probably a lot of them and a lot of noise. So get ready. The cicadas are coming out, and we've got uh, some pictures of them in this area. Okay, wind. This is the wind, and I'm going to stop this for you on both afternoons for Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock, almost due south in the 10 to 15 gust to 20 range. And then as we get into Friday, again around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, kind of south again, uh, maybe not quite as strong, but still 10 to 15. So we've got southerly winds as we head through the next couple of days. How about future cast? Well, there's not much to show here. The rain is over, and the skies are going to start to clear some. Uh, for Thursday and Friday, we're looking at partly sunny skies. Uh, it's going to warm up. That's going to be the big story. But as you can see, by looking at that, pretty much no rain chances now for a while. And that's going to be our focus is the dry weather. So we're going to go map by map here. This is projected for Saturday. Big dome of high pressure. I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, centered basically over East Kentucky and Tennessee, but definitely protecting this area. That's Saturday. Here's Sunday. It expands down towards about Nashville, but again, it's all over the southeast, so the, all that area will be dry. This is now getting into Monday. Notice a front just north of us up towards Chicago to about Fort Wayne. There may be some showers and storms up there, but I think most of those stay north of us on Monday. 
By Tuesday, the high pressure now is getting down closer to the Gulf Coast area, and we have a front trying to squeeze in from the north. So if you didn't get enough rain and you are looking for more, probably about Tuesday, and this next map is Wednesday, our chances will be increasing some as that front gets closer to us. The high pressure breaks down and moves a little bit to the south, and that would increase our rain chances once we get into about next Tuesday and Wednesday. So here is the rainfall forecast. These are all going to be 24-hour forecasts. This is 7P Wednesday to 7P Thursday. Nothing here. You can see everything uh, spins right around that high pressure. Still heavy rains in parts of Texas and Louisiana. 7P on Thursday to 7P Friday. Nothing here. This is 7P now Friday into 7P Saturday. Nothing here. Still directing heavy rains, though, into uh, Texas. And they're going to start to get some heavier rains in the northern high plains as well. Uh, 7 p on Saturday to 7 p Sunday. Again, nothing here, but we do start to see a few showers up to the north. Now, this is getting into 7 p.m. Sunday to 7 p.m. Monday, mostly north of here, but you get the idea it's getting closer. And now, this is 7 p.m. Monday to 7 p.m. Tuesday. Now, we start to see a chance. So, there's Tuesday, and here's Wednesday with the front getting closer. So, we do see rain chances increasing again, but probably not until about Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And I wanted to show you before we wrap up here, our forecast, we've got it dry all the way through Monday. Uh, temperatures in the upper 80s on, on Sunday and Monday. And remember, there's going to be a lot of moisture in the ground that's going to be evaporating, so it's going to be humid as well. So we're talking 88, but the heat index, what it feels like, will be in the mid-90s. Okay, I want to show you the 10-day rainfall forecast off the three models. And remember, most of our rain is going to come in the days about 8, 9, and 10. So not really for the next week, or at least for the next several days. But uh, this is the European. You can see the heavy rains directed to East Texas, Louisiana, into the Plain States. This is the GFS model. Same areas, picking up some of that pretty heavy rain. And this is the Canadian. Now, it also starts to show some rain getting in here. But again, this would be towards the end of that 10-day period. Uh, we're going to be pretty dry for probably at least the next, oh, five, six days, it looks like. Okay, lastly, our longer-term probability map, 6 to 10-day temperature forecast above normal here. This is May 25 to 29, but here you go. We get into the wetter weather. Again, after we get through about day 6 or 7, it does look like the front stalls near us again, and rain chances ramp up, so you can see May 24 to about May 30 given there. And then this is the 8 to 14-day temperature above normal again as we wrap up May and head to June, and also above normal on the precip. So we've got a dry period now settling in, but I think that pattern will change and we'll go back into a wetter weather pattern once we hit uh, the end of May and into the beginning part of uh, June. So there's a lot of info for you and uh, we'll continue to monitor it. But the bottom line, going to get warm, going to be dry. It looks like right through the weekend with our first bout of some summer weather just around the corner.